Welcome to Color Harmony. My name is Eric Francis. In this video, we're going to be painting hair. So we make a drawing, we give it an umber wash, and we're ready to begin. This video is a continuation of another video. What you're seeing now is what we've completed before. Pokemama55 wanted to know, how do you paint dreads? So, for our first tip, I would like you to identify the direction the hair is flowing in. It's really hard trying to paint in each individual lock. So find a few that flow in the right direction and paint those first. It'll make the process easier. Our second tip is to identify the lightest and darkest areas of the hair. We're still in the early stages, so nothing really too detailed. What I did was I used my really rough brush and just started pushing paint on the canvas, not really even blending, just like putting dots of paint like pointillism. The next thing to do is start picking out more details. At this stage, you're identifying locks of hair that either go with the flow of the hair or that go against it. In the beginning, we identified locks of hair that go with the flow. Now we're just identifying more locks. We are ready to start painting in each individual lock. At this stage, we're getting more specific, but we're identifying the locks in a real general kind of way. So locks that are lighter, they get lighter colors. Locks that are darker, get darker colors. What you're watching now is me getting very specific. This is probably the most time consuming part of painting locks. Earlier in the painting, I was just uh, doing it pointillism style. That's just so you can get the texture and the look of locks. Now I'm washing in different colors. So the secret ingredient to this painting for me was love. <laughs> I know how cheesy and corny I sound right now. But the truth is, as I was painting, I remembered all my family and friends who have locks. So when it comes down to it, when there's a, a choice between more effort and less effort, you always put that much more. And it shows in the final product. So let's go over the process. First, we develop the flow. Then we begin to add in dark and light areas. We then begin to start adding in little details. And we start adding even more details. So as you're painting the locks, consider that it's a three-dimensional thing, you know? You see where the hair overlaps? I add shadows. I go back in and add highlights. This is something you have to keep in mind while you're doing your own painting. Plus, I spent a good amount of time dabbing in color so it can keep that textured look. It's not really blended that much at all. But I worked wet and wet a lot. I want to thank Alice and the folks over at Empty Easel Online Art Magazine. They have a lot of cool information. They recently interviewed me, and I want you guys to go take a look. There's a link in the description. Well, I hope you like what you see. If you do, do me a favor. Subscribe, like, share, or comment. And if you want to see some more of my artwork, you can visit my blog. There's a link in the description. And if you want to further support this content because you've been learning a lot and you find value in what I'm doing here, donate. We're creating one of the best free resources on the net for acrylic painters. Your donations make this idea into a reality. And remember, these videos are made in response to questions that you ask. So feel free to ask. You might see the answer in the video. Peace.